Sega. God has raised you to the honor of the kingdom of Europe's glory. These words from letters sent by Anglo-Saxon scholar Catwolf would prove more than simple rhetoric in the long and remarkable life of the man called Charles the Great, better known as Charlemagne. Born around 742, Charlemagne was described as broad and strong in the form of his body. A seasoned warrior by his 20s, he, alongside his brother Carloman, rose to power as the King of the Franks upon the death of his father, King Pepin, in 768. It wasn't long before trouble brewed in the Western Empire, and in 769, Charlemagne led his armies to Bordeaux. The Aquitanians and their Gascon neighbors surrendered to Charles, and the King of the Franks had subdued his first uprising. Charlemagne's line, granted authority by the Roman Church, were longtime supporters of the papacy. Tensions were rising between Pope Hadrian and the Lombards, and when their ruler, Desiderius, invaded papal territories as far as Articoli, a mere day's ride from Rome, Charlemagne sided with the Roman Pope. Desiderius, already alienated by Charlemagne's rejection of his daughter, refused to withdraw and cemented hostilities. Charlemagne wasted no time and led his armies through the Alpine passes. When the forces met Lombard fortifications, Charlemagne's strategic superiority became clear and he flanked the Lombards, forcing them to retreat to the fortified city of Pavia. Charlemagne's Frankish army surrounded the city and laid siege. However, Charlemagne possessed no siege engines for this battle. But luck was on his side and the Lombards were equally unprepared and low on provisions. It was clear to Charlemagne that their forces could simply wait out the now isolated Lombard city. Charlemagne subsequently subdued the regions of northern Italy, and 10 months after the siege had begun, Desiderius surrendered and opened the gates of Pavia. Charlemagne excelled at war and reputedly led his troops from horseback, surrounded by his elite guard, noblemen, who later entered myth as holy warriors, Charlemagne's paladins. His people, the Carolingians, were equipped with weaponry according to their social station. Peasant warriors who comprised the infantry were unable to afford swords. They carried lances, shields and bows, often entering the field of battle without any armour. But the core of Charlemagne's forces were his cavalry, nobles and wealthy warriors loyal to Charlemagne, who were adorned with the finest horses, armour and weapons of the era. Charlemagne's legendary sword, Joyeuse, was said to be forged from the Spear of Destiny, the spear that had pierced Jesus' side on the cross. Charlemagne, his mission renewed, returned to his abandoned campaign against the Saxons, marching on Westphalia and taking the fort of Sigiburg. His campaign continued to northern Germany, the region of Eastphalia, where he forced their leader Hesse to renounce paganism and convert to Christianity on pain of death. But the Saxons were a hardy people, not easily subjugated. When Charlemagne left Westphalia to subdue the powers in Italy once more, the Saxons attacked his encampments at Erisberg. Charlemagne returned, determined to break the Saxon spirit, and subdued them once more in 776. A year later, he established a new camp at Karlstadt, modern Bavaria, and forced mass baptisms on the conquered pagan peoples. Next, Charlemagne answered a plea from Saracen rulers trapped in the Iberian Peninsula. He led his forces over the Western Pyrenees into Spain, conquering the city of Pamplona and subduing the Basques. This was to be a far more difficult battle than Charlemagne had anticipated, however, and he failed to defeat the Muslim forces or fell the city of Zagosa. He withdrew in 778, but was beset by the Basques at the pass of Roncesvalles. His rear guard destroyed, inspiring legends of the bravery of Roland, a Frankish warrior who said to have held off an army 100,000 strong with his unbreakable sword, Durandale, covering Charlemagne's retreat. In 782, Charlemagne returned to Saxony and declared that any Saxon refusing to convert to Christianity would be put to death. 
Widukind, leader of the Saxons, returned to the lands and conflicts renewed. In response, Charlemagne would perform his most infamous and brutal act. He ordered the execution of four and a half thousand prisoners at the massacre of Verden. This act triggered renewed effort by Widukind and his allies, but they could not withstand the combined forces of Charlemagne's growing empire. By 785, the Saxons were once more defeated and Widukind accepted baptism, a symbolic defeat for their people as crippling as the military losses. Over the next decade, Charlemagne cemented his rule over Europe, subduing the Avars in the central Danube, then the Moors of Corsica and Sardinia, uniting the Spanish March under Frankish rule. By 798 and the beginning of the Slavic War, he seemed an unstoppable force. And when Pope Leo III fled to Charlemagne at Paderborn for aid, he agreed to intervene on the Pope's behalf against Rome itself. He traveled to Rome and held a council there on December 1st, 800 AD. After swearing an oath of innocence, the renewed Pope used his powers to reward Charlemagne. On the 25th of December, he crowned Charlemagne at St. Peter's Basilica, bestowing upon him the title and powers of Holy Roman Emperor. This act created two distinct Roman empires, and though it was claimed that Charlemagne was unaware of the Pope's intention to coronate him, he took up arms against the Byzantine Empire, battling the Emperor Nicephorus I for control of the Dalmatian coast and Venetia. By 810, Charlemagne agreed to release territories upon his official recognition as Emperor of the Western Roman Empire. Charlemagne used his position as emperor for the furtherance of his subjects, however. He supported education and literacy and established the practice of book reproduction on a scale as yet unseen in Europe, ushering in what's now known as the Carolingian Renaissance. For the first time since the Romans, there was a sense of European identity. He was in many ways the father of modern Europe. Charlemagne died in 814 at age 72, but his legend by this time was cemented. Crusader, lawmaker, teacher, and arguably genocidal despot, the legend of Charlemagne will endure, at least to some, as the light of the dark Middle Ages.